All right, so now all of the now that all of the heavy duty stuff is done, I'm going to start working my way from the bucket back to the main part of the machine and I'm going to get cracking on the hydraulics and doing all the hard lines for the hydraulics, getting them ready for the soft lines. So here we have the plastic um, cylinder and I need to run a port in on this side and then a tube, a hard line that runs down to the other end and then on the opposite side there needs to be another port. Now I need to create a collar that goes around this to house the block that the hose goes into and so uh, I was going to take a strip of brass and bend it around but I thought I'd try something else. I have a piece of 4 mil tubing here and it's a thick wall of brass. It's a little too heavy duty to look like a correct scale if I were to try to slide it over here. Um, but the exterior of exterior of this is about 3.5 millimeters. The interior of this is three millimeters. So actually, I think this is a three and a half mil tubing. And I'm drilling the inside of it out with this drill bit, which just so happens to be the same diameter as this. So hopefully, I will be able to have a more thin wall brass and slide it over. Now, as you can see, I've already done some drilling on this, um, so I'll continue what I was doing. I just uh, hosed it down with some WD-40, lined it up with the drill bit, and I've been just thinning it out, basically. So that actually worked really well. You can see this is the standard side, and then this is the side where I drilled it out, and it is a lot thinner. So now I've got to slice a few collars off here and then see if I can fit them over this. All right, got the two little rings cut, a little piece of 0.8 mil brass. And then this is just here for reference so I can make sure I have it lined up where I want. It's time to solder it all together. So those two parts that we just drilled are the end blocks that go into the hydraulic here. And then this part is going to connect it all. All right, so I'm gonna do a dry mock up here. We'll put it together dry and then I think I'm gonna glue it if it all fits where it goes. So that little pigtail right there, 
will eventually get bent over and that will aid me in attaching the soft hoses or the soft lines. As you can see, that's it all kind of held together there. All right, so this is done for now. Eventually these will get bent into the proper shape to allow for the hoses. And the last thing I need to do is create the pins that are going to hold all this together and then this whole component will be finished. So let's get on with that. All right, so I'd actually like to be able to use those little micro uh, reading glasses screws that I used to hold the bucket pins in place. So I'm going to drill the same size hole in here, see if that works. If not, then I'll just use a piece of brass and these will just have to get glued in place once the hydraulic is installed. But it would be cool if they were removable. see if these lock pins work. Hopefully I didn't mix them up. I think there's a chance that I might have. Make sure this hole's lining up. Mm, I think that's the right one. All right, so this inner hole, that's the eight mil hole. And I basically did a ghetto tap job. I just ran the screw into it, which threaded it. And then this outer hole is a millimeter. It's just a little bit bigger, so I'm not having to worry about trying to thread that. It'll just run through it and lock it in place. Oh, snap! It works! That's awesome. So you can see there's a little bit left in there. Once I do the final assembly and install everything, I'll probably just reach in there with these guys, clip that off. If I ever need to take it apart, then I'll just run it back out. This is the first time I've ever made like removable pins. Most all my stuff has been set it and forget it. But I thought it'd be fun to add a little more realism to this one. That's awesome. That's totally going to work well. The back of this, probably grind those down. But that is the stick finished. All right, so you can see here we got some scribbling going on on the back of here. I just took a couple pens and I marked out where all the lines need to run. So we have a series of lines that run on this side. They're a little bit thicker. For those, I'll be using this 1.1 millimeter brass. And then some lines here that are a little bit thinner. I'll be using one mil brass. And these are the lines that run down the boom to the stick cylinder or the bucket cylinder, I should say. And then there's these little brackets that hold all those lines in place. I'm going to be making those using 2 mil tubing, 1.5 mil tubing, and then this piece of brass. And then we're going to mount them in place with some rod. But first, we need to put holes in this for the rod.
All right, so I'm doing the second one of these. Uh, this has smaller tubing. Uh, you'll see why later. But this time I'm gonna do it without putting the solder on it first. I found a way to pin it up so that it doesn't move around. So I'll be able to just swipe it with the solder. I also learned an interesting thing. So I've been using this solder. You can see that I'm flooding the screen with it. Um, it is a 0 0.015 diameter silver bearing solder from Radio Shack. On the package itself, it doesn't say anything about having a flux core. I think maybe in the bigger package that this came with, it did, but I just looked it up online right now to order some more because I'm running out of it. And it has a flux core in it. I had been avoiding using flux core solders because um, it's not recommended for doing brass work. It's more intended for like electronics and stuff like that. But I think because this is such a small diameter, that it's such a minimal amount that it doesn't matter. And also this stuff is pretty old, so there's a possibility that the flux core on this stuff went bad. But I'm gonna order more of it. It seems to be working really well. So flux core or not, it seems to uh, seems to do the job quite well. And I like it because it's so small. And I haven't been able to find anything this small uh, for the same price point. So I'm gonna keep using it because it works. That was kind of sloppy. All right, this one is going to be for uh, mounting the rest of the hard lines that are going to the bucket cylinder. All right, now it's time to cut all this stuff apart soldered it all together in one piece to make it a little bit easier to solder but now we have to cut each individual part off right so these first ones that I just cut here are the little line holders that will attach the hose to the top of the boom, the hose that's going forwards to the bucket cylinder. So that's a 1.5 mil tubing and then it has a 1 mil inner diameter. This little post will uh, go down to a hole drilled into the boom and then the only part you'll see is that. Finished all the little mounting points, they look like miniature binoculars. These are what are going to hold the hydraulic hoses in place on here eventually. Uh, look like a bunch of little earrings, but these are good to go. Uh, I have some a little bit more work to do on these, but before I do that, I want to bend up the hard lines that are going to be running up the back of this. Got the first set of lines installed here. Let's see if I can change the lighting here. 
So these would be the ones that go all the way forward to the bucket cylinder. Give you a side shot here. So we have the one mil inside the one and a half mil tubing. Um, these will get tidied up a little bit here at the bottom, then just punched hole in the square tubing and then ran the eight millimeter rod through it into the holes that I put in here. And then there's the rest of the tubing without the risers under them. To give you guys a shot, it's a side shot, the top shot, and those just run all the way down. And I was actually able to get them installed in there as well. This is a little bit long and I'll be cutting it back uh, eventually and then I'll be shoring these up as well. All right, and we got the other one on here. This one was pretty simple because of how short it is and it's got a little bit taller risers under it and then taller risers right there then you can see where it all crosses over on the back. And that is it for this episode, guys. Um, if there's anything that you guys want me to, to go over again, like how I did this, let me know. If you got any suggestions, let me know as well. On the next episode, I really don't know what we're going to do. Um, there's going to definitely be some stuff getting done between this episode and the next. Just little itty-bitty parts that probably won't be. Uh, very interesting, but I'll show you what I had done. It's just basically going to be building the final pin for here and then finishing the other input on the other side of this one and then bending these little pirate arms into place. And I think that is going to be it for our boom. Still need to do the lights. I'll probably do those when I do the lights for the rest of the machine. And I think that's about it for this one. Then we're going to have to do the boom cylinders on the next episode as well. As always, guys, I really appreciate you watching the channel. And I will see you next time. Adios.